they say down there? What's happening with Gabe? I went down there and I got him out. It cost me $50. Say he was disturbing the peace. Judge want to set up a hearing for him in three weeks, say, to come show cause why he should be recommitted. Well, what'd you say? What'd you tell the judge? I told him that I'd take care of it. Didn't make no sense to recommit the man. He stuck out his big greasy palm and he asked me to give him $50 and take him on home. Where's he at now? Where'd he go off to? He going on minding his own business. He don't need no one to hold his hand. Well, seems like that would be the best place for him if they did put him in the hospital. And I know what you're gonna say, but that's just what I think would be best. The man then got his life ruined fighting for what? I didn't want to take and lock him away. Let him be free. He don't bother nobody. Well, everybody's got their own way of looking at it, I guess. Come on and get your lunch. I got a bowl of lima beans and some cornbread in the oven. Come on and get something to eat. Ain't no sense of fretting over Gabe. Rose, got something to tell you. Well, come on, wait till I get this food on the table. Rose, I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to explain it, none. It just sort of grows on you until it gets out of control. It starts off like a little bush, and then the next thing you know, it's a whole forest. Wait, what is you talking about? I'm talking, woman. Let me talk. I'm trying to find a way to tell you. I'm gonna be somebody's daddy. Troy, you're not telling me this. You're gonna be what? Rose, now see. Telling me you're gonna be somebody's daddy? You're telling your wife this? I have to wait 18 years to hear something like this? Rose, it's just a minute. Ain't nothing you can say, Troy. Ain't no way of explaining that. Why, Troy? Why? After all these years to come dragging this into me now, it don't make no sense at your age. I could have expected this 10 or 15 years ago, but not now. Age ain't got nothing to do with it, Rose. I done tried to be everything a wife should be. Everything a wife could be. Been married 18 years, and I got to live to see the day you tell me you've been seeing another woman and done fathered a child by her. I ain't never want to know half nothing in my family. My whole family is half. Everybody got different fathers and mothers. My two sisters and my brother. Can't hardly tell who's who. Can't never sit down and talk about papa and mama. It's always your papa and your mama and my papa Bro, and stop mama. it now. I ain't never wanted that for none of my children. And now you want to drag your behind in here and tell me something like this. You want to know. Why? It's about time that you know. Well, I don't want to know, God damn it. I can't just make it go away. It's done now. I can't wish the circumstances of the thing away. And you don't want to either. Maybe you want to wish me and my boy away. Maybe that's what you want. Well, you can't wish us away. I've got 18 years of my life invested in you. You ought to stay upstairs in my bed where you belong. Rose, now listen to me. We can get a handle on this thing. We could talk it out, come to an understanding. All of a sudden, it's we. Where was we when you was down there rolling around with some godforsaken woman? We should have come to an understanding before you started making a goddamn fool of yourself. You're a day late and a dollar short when it comes to an understanding with me. It's just, she gives me a different idea. A different understanding of myself. I can step out of this house and get away from the pressures and the problems. Be a different man. I ain't gotta worry about how I'm gonna pay the bills or how I'm gonna get the roof fixed. I could be a part of myself that I ain't never been. What I wanna know is do you plan to continue seeing her? That's all you can say to me. I can sit at her house and laugh. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can laugh. And it feels good. It reaches all the way down to the bottom of my shoe, Rose. I can't get that up. Maybe you ought to go down there and stay with her. She's a better woman than me. It ain't about nobody being a better woman or nothing, Rose. You ain't to blame. A man could not have asked for a woman to be a better wife than you've been. How responsible. I 
You got my stuff locked up into a pattern of taking care of you all. Thought I forgot about myself. What the hell was I there for? That was my job, not somebody else's. Rose, I tried all my life to live decent, to live a clean, hard, useful life. I tried to be a good husband to you in every way I know how. Maybe I come into this world backwards, I don't know. But you come to the plate with two strikes up against you before you even get there, you gotta guard it closely. You can't afford to let nothing get past you. You can't afford a call strike. If you're going down, you're going down swinging. <laughs> and they lined up against you. What you gonna do? I fooled the rose, I bunny. When I found you, Corey, in a halfway decent job, I was safe. Couldn't nothing touch me. I wasn't gonna get no more strikes. I wasn't going back to the penitentiary. I wasn't going to be lying in the streets with a bottle of wine. I was safe. I had me a family, a job. I wasn't going to get no strikes. I was standing on first, waiting on them boys to bring me in, to, to bring me on home. You should have stayed in my bed, Troy. And then I saw that guy, and she burned up my backbone. And I just got to thinking that. If I try, maybe I could still suck it. Do you understand? After 18 years, I wanted to still suck it. You should have held on. You should have grabbed me tight and held on. I stood on first base for 18 years. And I said to myself, like, what well, goddamn it, go for it. We ain't talking about baseball. We're talking about you going off to lay in bed with another woman, then bringing it back home to me. That's what we're talking about. We ain't talking about no baseball. Rose, you ain't listening to me. I, I, I'm trying my hardest to explain to you that it ain't easy for me to say that I've been standing in the same spot for 18 years. I've been standing with you. I've been right here with you, Troy. I got a life, too. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot with you. Don't you think I ever wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? Don't you think it ever crossed my mind to want to get to know other men? That I wanted to lay up somewhere and forget about my responsibilities? That I wanted someone to make me laugh so I could feel good? You're not the only one who's got wants and needs. But I held on to you, Troy. I took all my feelings, my wants and needs, my dreams, and buried them inside you. I planted a seed and watched and prayed over it. I planted myself inside you and waited to bloom. And it didn't take me no 18 years to realize that the soil was hard and rocky and it wasn't never going to bloom. But I held on to you, Troy. I held you tighter. You was my husband. I owed you everything I had. Every part of me I had to give. And upstairs in that room, with the darkness falling in on me, I gave everything to erase the doubt in my mind that you wasn't the finest man in the world. And that wherever you was going, I wanted to be there with you. Because you was my husband. Because that was the only way I was going to survive as your wife. You always talking about what you give and what you don't have to give. But you take too. You take and don't even know nobody's giving. You say I take and I don't give. Troy, you're hurting me. You say I take and I don't give. Troy, you're hurting my arm. Let go. I gave you everything I got. Don't you tell that lie on me. Troy! Don't you tell that lie on me. 